Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hi, dear students. How are you all? I hope you had an enjoyable weekend and you thought about the things, the interesting things that we took in our last week. Now we're going to complete what we have in our unit, which is two is better than one. Going back to our page, page number 12, we have the topic about animal partners, which was a very interesting topic. It was, of course, mainly the same idea that we have in the unit, which is teamwork. But we focused on the, uh, we have here this word, which is symbiosis. Now, symbiosis here is what we have. It is a special relationship in which animals depend on and benefit from one another. So we talked about different animals, as you can see here. We talked about the uh, African crocodile and the plover bird the zebra and the ostrich. We also talked about the honey guide birds and the rattle. And we have the last group or the last team, the clownfish and the anomaly. Now we have the uh, homework, the reading uh, questions or the comprehension questions, which are on page number 13. So just to see what are the questions we have here, uh, five questions, we're going to read each one separately and look for the answer, or you can check your answers with me. So we have the first question. Explain the meaning of symbi symbiosis. So we have your symbiosis here. We're going to see what is the meaning as we have, but we're going to take it from the paragraph. So the paragraph shows that we have here this kind of special relationship in which animals depend upon and benefit from one another is called symbiosis. Now going back to the questions. In what way do the African crocodile and the plover have a symbiotic relationship? So it's an unusual relationship, actually. Just to check your answer with me, we have the answer is going to be here. The plover picks out all the small pieces of meat stuck between the crocodile's teeth. And in return, the crocodile provides an easy meal for the plover. So this is one of the topics that we discussed in our last lesson. Going back, we have question number three. Give an example of a case of symbiosis, symbiosis in which each animal has the same goal. We have here, they have the same goal. We want something that they both share, they both want at the same time. So we can find the answer is going to be between the rattle and the honey guide bird. Both these animals live on grasslands in Africa and have an appetite for honey. Going back, we are going to move on to our Next question, which is question number four. Name two animals that make up for each other's deficiencies, and how do they do this? So we mentioned something about having a, a kind of deficiency, a lack. Or we have here the lack here. So what, what are we talking about here? We have the two easy animals, the ostrich and the zebra. So we have the answers. Actually, they are going to be in two parts. First of all, there is no surprise, since they are a perfect match. While the giant, flightless ostrich has, has poor senses of both smell and hearing, the zebra has an acute senses, or has acute senses of smell, smell and hearing. And moving on to the second part we have here. On the other hand, the zebra has terrible eyesight, while the ostrich has excellent eyesight enhanced by its long neck, which enables the ostrich to see far into the distance. Now moving on to our last question. We have here the question number five. What benefits do the clownfish and anomaly offer each other? So there has to be also benefits, which makes them a symbiotic team together. Now we have the answer is going to be also in two parts. First of all, in this part, we have your living among the deadly tentacles of an anomaly has a clear advantage. Most predators stay away, so the clownfish feels safe. And in the other part, another benefit for the clownfish is that it is able to eat the anomaly's leftover bits of food. 
The brightly colored clownfish attracts predators. When the clownfish swims under the anomaly's tentacles to safety, if the predator follows, the anomaly has the chance to sting and eat it. Other services the clownfish performs are cleaning up food scraps and dead anomaly tentacles. So we can see here from the reading, which was a very interesting part here, that there are lots of benefits between these animals. So we can say here, by just to summarize here, that the anomaly provides a safe home for the clownfish and leftover food. The clownfish attracts prey to the anomaly, cleans up food scraps and dead tentacles, and chases away fish that eat the anomaly. So here I have a summarized answer for you, if you just uh, like to write it down uh, under the question. Now moving on with our lesson. Of course, we had an enjoyable part and it had fascinating facts about these animals and their relationship together. We are going to move on and go back to the human world. Now the human world, going back to page number 13, we have the speaking part. Now there is the question, work in pairs or groups, think about your relationship with a good friend, what can you each uh, or offer each other? So we have here, also we are going to talk about teamwork, but we are going to just focus on the speaking part here and as we mentioned at the beginning of the semester it is important to practice your speaking and there is uh, a kind of discussion or conversation within it so our objectives are to relate symbiotic relationships to personal ones so it's not going to be between animals but even personal or human relationships they have the same type and we have number two maximize opportunities for language practice now going back to page number 13, you can find this table here. Now in this table, we have four columns. The first part, what can you offer your friend? You can offer something, what can it be? Just think about the many uh, things or the, uh, the uh, daily uh, discussions that you have or the daily work as students together. What are the things that you can benefit or you can offer your uh, classmate or your friend? The second part, how does it help your friend? So if it is something you can offer, there has to be something that um, he benefits or she benefits from it. How does it help him or her? The third part, what can your friend offer you? So because we are thinking about symbiotic relationships here, so in return there has to be something that you benefit from your friend. And the last part, how does it help you? So you are going to write your points together in class as peers or as in groups, and you can just discuss and speak to one another about how you help each other and how there is a kind of relationship between you in class or even as friends. Now complete the chart with your notes and use them to discuss in class. We have here, this is a practice that you will complete in your class together. Moving on. Now, since we are speaking about friends, I have another question or another note for you. The question here, do you think it is necessary for people to share the same characteristics in order to get along well with each other? Just think about it. Each person has uh, different characteristics. Do you think as friends, they have to have the same characteristics together? Now, just to give you an example here, of course you can hear, just answer why or why not based on your answer, is it yes or is it no? And you can show or discuss your point of view with one of your colleagues or in class. Just to give you an example here, we have different drinks. Now let's say for example that you like to take a cappuccino or order one and your friend likes to have a flight white. Does this make you different from one another, does this make uh, your friendship impossible? Or is it something common or something that is usual to be different from one another? Now, this means that each one of us has different characteristics, but we can be friends or there are things that join us together. So moving on, we are going to move on to our write lesson, uh, writing lesson, sorry, which is on page number 14 here. Now, 
open your books on page number 14. Before we start with the book, we have our objectives. Our objectives, number one, to state the importance of sharing characteristics between friends as a personal opinion. Number two, examine two personalities and outline their differences. Number three, to compare using a Venn diagram to write two friends' qualities. Number four, describe someone's negative and positive qualities and give a personal opinion about them. Now we're going to start, uh, start with our lesson. We have, first of all, in our page, page number 14, read the text on page 14. You have a text or complete text here. And you are going to find out something. Number one, who are the people involved? So we are talking about people. Who are these people? And then after that, we have here, what kind of people are they? Who are the people and what kind of people are they? After that, we have here underlined words that provide information about each one. Now, in your view, what are the characteristics that they share? So we have to be very careful from the very start. You know that you are going to look for people. Uh, who are these people? What are they? And you are going to underline specific words. They may be characteristics. It may be some words that you don't understand. You just can uh, discuss with uh, a classmate or look up the meaning. So moving on, we have here. Of course, there's going to be a Venn diagram. We're going to use it. So you can draw a Venn diagram. We have here this line to show that you're going to write the title. What is it about? What is the sub subject or topic in the book about? And we have the Venn diagram to show the differences. And of course, in the middle, what do they have as similarities? Now we're going to start. We have the first part. You can listen and read all together. So let's start. There is a memory that always makes me smile with contentment and admiration, and that is the memory of my maternal grandparents. My grandfather was a dedicated lawyer whose moral fiber prevented him from taking advantage of circumstances to make a profit. He was highly respected in courts and had the reputation of being the most honest law specialist. He was genuinely interested in people, history, law, and philosophy and was always reading when he was at home. He was the calmest, most serene person I have ever met. He never raised his voice, never lost his temper, and had a special ability to always rationalize things ever so smoothly that the worst calamity seemed like a slight twitch. Nothing could make him lose his sense and aura of peace. So here, this is going to be the first part, just to uh, note out that now we have the first person. So did you read from the beginning? Did you uh, uh, just notice who are we talking about? And there is a man here. Now she mentioned, the speaker mentioned, a lot of times he was this, he was that. There are lots of adjectives and characteristics that we have in the first two parts. We're going to complete with the second part or the third one. Grandmother, on the other hand, was the exact opposite. She used to get all worked up about things and flustered over minor irregularities. She had to have everything planned just so and still worried about things that could go wrong. She wanted everything to be perfect sometimes to an extreme. Once, when she had gotten into her cleanliness frenzy, she called someone in and got rid of genuine antique furniture that grandfather had painstakingly collected over a number of years and arranged in this perfect replica of a drawing room. There were fine, Elegant chairs with brocade upholstery on the seats and beautiful tables, not to mention some exquisite mirrors. 
grandmother had gotten it into her head that it was all useless because it collected too much dust and decided to sell it off to the first bidder for next to nothing. So we have here, this is the uh, two paragraphs, which is going to be the second part. Now we see that we have two personalities, two characters. Now each one has uh, lots of characteristics mentioned. So now you know that uh, going to your Venn diagram that we have this person and this person, you can just write many words just to uh, note out what uh, you understood about each character. And we're going to see what we have in the middle. So we're going to complete. When grandfather came home, he opened the door to the little drawing room to admire his creation and found an empty shell. He asked grandmother where everything was, and she very naturally informed him that she'd gotten rid of it because it was a dust magnet. All he did was chuckle, and then sat down at the table to have his lunch. This incident pretty much rounds up the amazing symbiosis between these two wonderful people. In spite of their different characteristics, they obviously complemented each other in a way that only they could fully appreciate. Okay, so the last two paragraphs, you can see that uh, there was um, the result. So we have the grandfather and the grandmother there was an incident between them and how the grandfather reacted to what she did. Now, there are lots of things that we are going to note out together. We are going to see what we have here. Now, let's just check and see what you noted. First of all, as the title, we have maternal grandparents. This is going to be the title or who we are talking about. Now, to see the characteristics, there is actually a lot to say about these two people. We have here maternal grandparents. We can say about the grandfather dedicated. He was a lawyer. Moral fiber. Highly respected. Honest law specialist. Interested in people, history, law, and philosophy. Serene calm, never raised his voice, never lost his temper, ability to rationalize things, aura of peace, nothing could make him lose his sense. So if you have written five or six of these characteristics that we have here, you are good. Moving on to the second character, which is the grandmother, we can say that she gets all worked up about things. Flustered. Had to have everything planned. Worried about things that could go wrong. Wanted everything to be perfect. Cleanliness frenzy. So also you have uh, three or four characteristics from their grandmother. Also, you did a great job. Now, what can we say in the middle between these two characters? What is the relationship between them? They had a wonderful relationship. They complimented each other, fully appreciated each other. So we have here, these are just three notes that we have here. We are going to move on to the second page. So we, as I mentioned before, these are just notes or just uh, points or characteristics generally. You can even add things that you understood from the text even if it is not written. Now, we do have the questions in the book, page number 14. Read the text and find out. What do you think might have happened if they both shared exactly the same characteristics and attitude to life? So you think about it. Do you think if they were the same personalities or they shared the same characteristics, would it be something enjoyable to live with each other, to have the same characteristics as each other? The second question we have here, of course, we have here A or B, if they were both like their grandfather or like the other character who was the grandmother, do you think it would be uh, something ad adaptable or they would be happy with each other if they both had the same characteristics. 
either like the grandmother or the grandfather. Now, why did the writer choose to describe the peculiar incident? What do you think it portrays? So there was a reason. We have the writer in the book. Why did the writer write about this story, about the incident that happened, about the, uh, the old antiques and the things that the grandfather gathered? So you can see at the very end, this incident pretty much rounds up the amazing symbiot symbiosis between them, or these two wonderful people. In spite of their different characteristics, they obviously complemented each other in a way that only they could fully appreciate. So despite their differences, they appreciated each other. Now in the book, they ask you to read the text again and find out what is the topic of each paragraph? What or who is the paragraph about? And then are all paragraphs about the same length? We have also why or why not? We have the third question, what words or phrases describe the qualities of each person? Can you think of more? And we have the last question, which qualities are demonstrated through the incident? So we are going to go by one by one on them. We have the first one. Of course, you can see here that I have the complete paragraph in front of you. Just to see that we have here, these are the different paragraphs. You can see that we have one, two, three, four, and five paragraphs. Now, mainly, just to see here, we have are all the paragraphs about the same length? Did you notice the paragraphs? Are they the same? Why or why not? So, of course, no, they are not the same. You can just look again. We have here, it is colored. You can see that the first paragraph and the last paragraph, they are shorter than the other paragraphs. You can say that the, because they are the introduction and also the summary of our whole passage. Now, since we are focusing on the paragraphs here, we have another question. What words or phrases describe the qualities of each person? Can you think of more? So I just recalled that you can add more characteristics or something that you understood, which may not be mentioned uh, in the paragraph. So actually, there are lots of words that we have here. We can say, for example, like dedicated. We have here highly respected. We have also honest. In the second paragraph, we have interested in people, history and law and philosophy the calmest, most serene person I have ever met, never lost his temper, and we can say also had special ability to always rationalize things, and he had sense and aura of peace. No, there are other words. We can say that he was patient. We can also ask, uh, say that he was kind, and he was sophisticated, so these words or characteristics can be said about the grandfather even if he, uh, they are not mentioned. We have also in the second paragraph about the grandmother. She used to get all worked up about things and flustered over minor irregularities. She had to have everything planned. She wanted everything to be perfect. Cleanliness frenzy. And also, what can you add? You can say about her that she was a little bit irritable, hasty, and we have here, she was also strict and accurate at the same time. Now we have the question after that, which qualities are demonstrated through the incident? Now there are also, through the incident, we can see that we have the three parts that we passed by and you listen to. We can say a lot of qualities that are demonstrated like understanding, empathy, humor, lack of conflict, symbiotic attitude, and also caring. Now, I want you to prepare. We have, this is the first part of the writing. In the next lesson, inshallah, we are going to go to the second part, which is uh, actually what you are going to do because we have a writing lesson. So you are going to think about two people who you know, who are good friends. 
Using a Venn diagram, write the qualities you feel each person has. In the overlapping portion of the diagram, write the qualities, characteristics that they share. Write a short story or a short essay, sorry, about the two friends explaining how they complement each other. So there is a lot to do, actually. You are going to think about your friends. Write them in a Venn diagram, and then you are going to write a story about these uh, two people or uh, any story that happened between them. So we have here, this is what we're going to do in our next lesson, inshallah. What we did now, we uh, gave opinions, read and listened, identified characteristics, composed a Venn diagram, and organized writing steps for our next lesson, inshallah. So be ready and see you soon.